Andy Review. Angry Andy. Hello and welcome to Angry Andy Reviews, and this is my review for Star Wars The Acolyte, Episode 6. And, well, nothing happens in this episode. Nothing happens of any purpose, any real drive, any real momentum. This episode is quite possibly the most uneventful of all the episodes. I'm going to be brutally honest and say it was an absolute friggin' waste of my time. And I believe it's a waste of time for everybody watching this episode, because realistically, of all the things that happen in this episode, of which there are very little, it's all busy work. It could have been condensed quite easily into five, ten minutes even, and squeezed into potentially the, the following episode to come, because... Again, we have dribbling, waffling nonsense that goes nowhere. We are once again given very little information, which is not a problem. It's not a problem. But when you're, when you're constantly playing with this, oh, we're interrupted just as I'm delivering a line. Oh, this happens just as I'm delivering a line. Oh, this is happening. And it's all nonsense and false, just false, utter false sense of tension and timing. There is very little of anything worthy in this episode. We have Manny Jacinto, to be fair to him, he is giving a really good performance and I'm going to say right off the bat, I think if he was in any other series and given any better writing, he would be a fantastic villain. There is an, an air to him, there is an allure to his character that's quite 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 it's hard to describe really it's almost as if he's he's undercutting his own performance he's undercutting his own mystery and anger and, and rage and he, he explains pretty much exactly you know that in the episode when he speaks to osha osha wakes up on a on an unknown planet so yeah we're going with unknown planet as the title and it literally says in the show unknown planet so he, she wakes up on that planet and he goes for a swim and gets completely naked for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> when we talk about when we talk about gratification and, and overuse of female naked anatomy, here we have Manny Jacinto completely in the buff. The only thing we're not seeing is everything below the waist. Hilarious, but never mind, that's an argument for another day for much more intellectual people than me. But they have this conversation, and again, it's conversations that are very small and very minuscule, where we reach a punch, a punchline to this, this line of dialogue, a revel revelation for this line of dialogue, and, let, and yet we stop and then we walk away and come back later on to do the same thing. It's all there in place, yet they fumble every single moment. They fumble every single intricacy of dialogue because instead of just getting on with it, we're, we're walking down a craggy beach, we're walking through a tunnel, we're walking through this, the ship powers down. The, oh God, it all goes dark. There's a strange mystery. The communications aren't working. Oh God, it's just busy work, as I said. But Manny Jacinto gets to the point and says, why not embrace the emotions that the Jedi are telling you you can't do? This is why you failed as a Jedi. It's fear, it's anger, it's desire, it's all this stuff we've heard before. But he delivers it in an interesting, calm way. Where we had Palpatine, who was seething mystery underneath, Manny Jacinto seems to be quite laid back. It's strange, it's bizarre, it's interesting. The only problem is the writing and the dialogue isn't interesting. It's quite clear that Manny Jacinto is a, an actor far above the quality of this series and hopefully he gets something that really pays off the, the, the quality of acting that he's probably capable of. I haven't seen much of him in anything really. I didn't watch The Good Place so I can't really comment on his, on his comedic prowess there or anything like that but in this series alone, I'm impressed and I'm intrigued. It reminds me of Ray Stevenson in Ahsoka delivering some gravitas that is completely missing from anywhere else. Uh, and that's pretty much the episode, really, in terms of Osha. Later on down the line, she is offered to put his helmet on. Um, <laughs> his helmet. And she does so. 
we move on we're with may and it's all going really strange and bizarre and she looks like she's going to go and kill Saul. She changes her mind, even though she could have killed him in the previous episode when he was knocked out. But again, there we go. And then there is this all this this nonsense, absolute dribbling nonsense, false tension nonsense going on yet again. I can't get my frigging words out because it's just ludicrous. It's stupid. It's pointless. It amounts to nothing. The power goes out on the ship, meaning they can't send any communications. So Sol asks May, who he thinks is Osha, to go and fix it all. She goes down, she goes to fix it, she takes her time. There's this meandering purpose of trying to fix the ship. And all of a sudden, Basil is there creating chaos. Did Basil cut the power to the ship? Who fucking knows? I don't know. I'm pretty sure the writers don't even know either, to be quite honest with you. And while she's there trying to fix the ship... For whatever reason, uh, Basil decides to have a fight with her and it's completely pointless. There's supposed to be some air of comedy value into this. The music changes, but fundamentally it's tonally off. It's completely off kilter with what's happening in the, in the show, what's happening in this episode, what's happened previously. Why are we trying to do some ridiculous Three Stooges Monty Python sketch? The droid turns and squirts oil into his face because Basil's reactivated the droid using a conveniently placed port that magically fits Osha's droid. And there's this, there's this scream of like comedy, oh, it's in my face kind of stuff. And you're like, what the fuck is going on here? What the fuck is this piece of shit? What is this? What is this show at this moment in time? What are you trying to do tonally? What fucking story are you telling? I don't fucking know. I'm pretty sure the writers don't know. I'm pretty sure the directors don't know either. And following that, the, the, the ship is reactivated. The May goes to send some kind of signal or something. And Master Sol stuns her. But just after that, she wakes up. And Sol's like, I'm going to tell you what's happening. But then he doesn't, because the, the ship is all right now. And then they fucking leave. And just as that happens, the Jedi arrive. <laughs> Literally, two seconds after the ship fucking leaves, the Jedi arrive. And, oh man, they manage to get a signal. So we get, um, I can't remember the, the Jedi Master's name, but she's the one that we've seen in the trailer with the purple lightsaber that's actually a whip. Nothing happens in this. They go to the planet where all the Jedi were massacred. They find the dead bodies of the Jedi. And then they they leave. Okay. And we have one moment of, oh my god, that was great. Because she activates the purple lightsaber whip and cuts a bug in half. Fantastic. It's all about the visuals, isn't it? Because there's fuck all else in this show at this point in time. And that's it. That's the episode. <laughs> what? Really? <sighs> I, I've talked a lot in my previous reviews about pacing, about tension, about dialogue, about writing, and I'm fed up, and I'm pretty sure you're all fed up at this point, of hearing me say the same fucking things. Last week's episode was a bit of respite. We got action, we got characters being killed off left, right and centre, we had a lifting of sort of the, the, the overwhelming amount of needless characters. Well, this episode created some more characters for us. We have a confused, scared Jedi number one, sort of just milling around with this green Jedi master who... <laughs> she's just literally like watching a, a Steel Gerda perform. The, the, the really unlikable characters. Again, I've said this before. The characters are thoroughly unlikable. Apart from um, Jedi Master Saul, okay, the actor's name I can never friggin' remember, and of course Manny Jacinto, there is nothing else that I'm gripping onto in this show apart from their performances. I'm sorry, but Osha and May are weak. Their characterization's weak. Is it the writing? Is it the dialogue? Is it the direction? Is it the performances? I don't know at this point. I don't care. We are six episodes in, and the central characters are uninteresting to me. They're offering nothing. They're too much the same. There's no dynamism to them. The the, the performances are, are so shallow and so wafer thin. <sighs> My God, this is a struggle of a series to get through. 
I cannot believe that we've had six episodes and we are still teetering around the edges of a mystery that, quite frankly, at this point, I don't give a flying fuck about. I'm more interested at this point as to what Manny Jacinto's character's motivations are, Smile or Ren. I'm more interested in that. I couldn't give a flying fuck about what Master Sol did at this point because they've, they've held on to it for too long. The mystery's gone. You should have revealed it after the episode with the witches. You should have got on with it and then dived headfirst into this mysterious stranger character who's here to fuck shit up. But no, instead we're dancing around the same trivial fucking mystery that, let's be quite honest with it, we know what's going to fucking happen. We know what's happened with the witches. We're just, like we are with Manny Jacinto's character, we're just, we're just stalling for time. We're adding false time and false density to this fucking show with this episode. It was 35 minutes of absolutely fuck all happening. When there's other shows out there with similar budgets or less, like House of the Dragon, which is delivering cracking fucking cinematic character-driven scenes, The Bear, which is relying on minimal dialogue, minimal just performance effort, but when we're looking in their eyes, we can see depth, we can see gravitas, we can see everything to do with character, story, plot development, development, character development, we can see it with very minimal effort because it's all part of the creative process. There's great direction, there's great cinematography, there's great performances underneath. With this, there's so much going on and yet there's nothing going on at all because we're just adding in shit for no reason whatsoever. This episode... <sighs> By far the most pointless episode. You could skip this episode. In fact, you could put this episode in YouTube and ask for a quick recap and that's all you would fucking need. You do not need to watch this episode. Osha starts listening to Manager Sinto's character, Smiler Ren. At the end of the episode, she puts the helmet on because it convinced her to block out the noise and listen to herself. Master Sol and May are milling about on the ship. The power goes down. May fixes the ship. Just before she sends a message, Sol stuns her and then says, I'm going to tell you what's happened. And then the ship comes back to life. They leave and that's it. The, the Jedi Order get a partial message from Sol saying there's been a disaster. They go to the planet, they find the dead Jedi and that's it. They fucking leave. That is the episode. That is literally the episode. Great. There you go. I'm going to give this episode a 2 out of 10 because you wasted 35 minutes of my life, to be quite honest with you. I could have watched another episode of The Bear, but instead I watched this, didn't I? But hey, we got a really great shot for Smiler Ren's helmet, which has been released for pre-order um, by Hasbro. If you like Black Series helmets like I do, why not get that? Because we've got to market the shit out of everything now. We've got to get in that merchandise, boys and girls. Next week, we're going to get Smiler Ren's lightsaber. You know why? Because we saw it in full glory this week. We saw it being held by Osha. Yes, she was holding Manny Jacinto's lightsaber. I mean, he does actually say a line of dialogue. If you're not going to join me when he's in the water. If you're not going to join me, can I put my clothes back on? Hmm. <laughs> what are your motivations there, Mr. Smiler Ren? Who knows? But yes, a two out of ten. A couple more episodes to go. And I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, we are gearing up for a cliffhanger finale. Telling you now, you mark my words, we're gearing up for a cliffhanger finale. And that means season two. Because let's face it, baby, these days... You gotta have a sequel! No! No! <laughs> yeah. Alright. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos and reviews like this. Yeah. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts about this episode as well. Again, thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. I'm aiming to surpass 500 very soon. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.